So, so Jim, I've been having this stress, you know, you have me on so many projects, <laughs> but I have my, 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 the person who does physical therapy for me, he's yeah. out of the Bay area and he actually does the work on the sharks, the 49ers and stuff like that. So yesterday I was supposed to get therapy for my neck and he actually had to fly out. The Niners flew him out to take care of something in Minnesota. I don't know. So tomorrow I'll, I'll get totally fixed up. So just everyone know I'm in excruciating pain right now, but I love Starship Adventure so much that I, I, I showed up anyway. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. I mean, hopefully the stress isn't, isn't because of me, because uh, like, you know, I've got the stressful job. You, you've got the easier of the two jobs. And, uh, you know, you've been doing this long enough now for Star Trek Adventures that uh, I, I think you can trust the process and know that it'll all work out and uh, you'll be okay. So um, if that's any, I know, I know it's hard to, as a writer, it's hard to hear that, but uh, uh, don't, don't sweat the small stuff, right? Even if my neck muscles don't believe you, I believe you and that's what matters. All right, everybody, welcome to another continuing conversation. I'm Michael Dismuke, freelance writer for Star Trek Adventures RPG and a blogger, one of the bloggers on continuing missions, which is the number one fan site for the RPG Star Trek Adventures. Jim, introduce yourself and then introduce our special guest we got today. Sure thing. My name is Jim Johnson. I am the line manager and or I'm sorry, the project manager and line editor for the Star Trek Adventures RPG, published by Modifius Entertainment. I am a lifelong Star Trek fan and uh, I am the co host of this here show with Michael. And uh, we are very, very excited and pleased to introduce our guest for this week, Jake Ross, <laughs> Star Trek Adventures contributor and uh, man about town. Please introduce yourself, sir. Uh, I'm Jake. I've uh... Off and on done writing work for uh, Star Trek Adventures. I did some of the lore stuff for Core, some of the Playtest Adventures, um, Gamma Quadrant, well, parts of Gamma Quadrant, and then some other things. And then I do my own stuff on the side. What are, what are some of the things you do on the side? Talk, talk to us a little bit about, because um, I know I interviewed you on continuing uh, missions a while back, but oh, still yeah. bring people up to speed about your history with uh, working in the RPG industry. Uh, well, I do you hear that? Sorry, there's dogs. Do you hear them? It's okay. Oh. okay. Uh, I got my I got my start. Um, my first job was actually I, I got hired by Alderac to work on Legend of the Five Rings, and then by Mongoose for some traveler stuff. Uh, and then I kind of I made it my mission to see how many samurai games I could make, and I think I've made like four different ones. So that might be the record for how many different samurai games someone's made. But uh, since then, I've kind of backed off and I'm doing some uh, some different stuff, kind of uh, hard sci-fi exploration games. Yeah, and it, in fact, that's one of the reasons we had you on the show. We were having a conversation. I know we're working on a project, NDA, but we were, talk, we were chatting and there was something you said that struck me. And myself and Jim have talked about it a lot. And I really wanted to open this up to the general audience, too, that watch or listen to our podcast. And you were talking about a transition you're making. Can you tell me that story about why Star Trek Adventures, writing for Star Trek Adventures, appeals to you now more than ever? And to your dog, who, by the way, sounds like he's very violent. Yeah, there's two of them. There's two of them. They're both Chewinis. One's more of a Chihuahua, and she's the one you can hear. Excuse me one second. This is great. Everyone's. I love, I love the background. It's so cool. <laughs> Actually, I, I, um, I'm using this in one of my books, uh, but uh, I, I used to do like a lot like, you know, like I said, I got started with Legend of the Five Rings, which was a pretty uh, violent game. Um, and recently I kind of deleted a lot of my back catalog just because I was getting more conscious of, you know, with the way things are in the world now, we kind of, I personally want to be a little more conscientious of what I put into the world in the creative space. Uh, maybe games where violence is not the optimal solution to your problems and or even a viable one because in the real world it doesn't really do much for you if yeah. you're using that. Yeah and I totally this is the subject I really want to explore today um, because that's one of the things that actually drew me towards Star Trek Adventures writing for them is because 
you can actually write a thought-provoking story that doesn't need a phaser or a photon torpedo, but is still engaging. And I know, Jim, yourself, you're a lifelong Star Trek fan, and we've talked a lot about, about why the game appeals to you. We talked about it as a stress reliever during the pandemic. Do you want to add a little theme to this before we dive into it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily directly related to, 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 to violence, but I mean, it's certainly a part of it, right? I mean, I think Star Trek, even, I mean, not even, Star Trek from the very beginning was a, was a hopeful outlook on the future, right? Where people would work together to you know, reach for their common goal. And of course, there was always some violence when, uh, you know, when the, when the Klingons of the week would show up or the, the, the alien of the week, you know, Kirk and uh, Spock and everybody would go into the fisticuffs and you get the dramatic, uh, you know, fight music and stuff. But that was almost, it, it was like a step above cartoon, cartoon violence. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was phaser blast. It wasn't bullets. There was a little bit of blood, but uh, it was it was a different level of violence, and uh, I mean I think clearly our society has changed in terms of like the desensitization, the sensitivity that we've gotten to violence. Because like I mean there's so much gunplay on movies and videos and television now, it's just hard to imagine. And um, I've noticed it over the last you know probably decade that I've gotten way more sensitive to it. Where I I'm, <laughs> it really bugs me to watch so much gunplay, and it's even influenced my writing too. Because like I, I used to do a lot of uh, fiction writing before I got caught up on Star Trek and. Uh, one of the series that I've been working on is a weird Western and cause I love the way I love Westerns and I love weird fantasy. And, but even then it's like, Oh, there's a lot of gunplay in that, in that, in that series. And can I go back to that? Cause it's just, I don't want to say it was gratuitous, but it was just a lot of gun violence. <laughs> it's like, there's so much gun violence in the real world right now. I just, I really struggle with that, but the Star Trek, it, it's just a, such a different shift and such a different type of storytelling that it, it, it can, I mean, it can certainly be violent if you want it to be, um, and then I'm not even just talking about Klingons and Batleths and, and getting into the blood for glory and stuff, but like, you know, Borg are getting into that whole body horror stuff, right. Of being completely stripped away of everything that you are. And that's pretty awful. That's, mm -hmm. that's violence in a different kind of format. Right. But I mean, storytelling wise, like Star Trek, you can have any genre in it and, and why and me personally, I, I like leaning toward the more positive, hopeful strive toward uh, utopia that you know I, you know honestly we're never going to have in this world but we can sure try and fight for it for me for me i think the key word which we're going to talk about because i actually want to i want to make this useful for game masters in, in case you're used to okay i have to somehow get into a fight in order to make this fun for my players i'm going to expand on that since we have three writers here and talk about alternatives to that but i think for me there's always going to be violence and even in the holiest books there's violence but do they glorify violence? So, so whereas you have Star Wars, it's called Star Wars. Come on, <laughs> you know, enough said, pew, pew. And then you have Star Trek. Um, this is a game where you can actually write stories. There may be times where they defend themselves. We know Starfleet's mantra is never punch or shoot first. So, um, so act in self-defense basically of yourself or others. Um, but we're gonna talk about how to have stories that don't glorify violence and that you can still have an amazingly engaging game. Um, and do any of you, by the way, I know I play with my nieces and nephews, some of who are under 18, so that matters to me. Any any of you watch Star Trek or play Star Trek with, with people who are children? Uh, my daughter's not so much into it. Uh, sometimes she is. She, she liked a little, I. A little bit of what I've shown her. She used to like to pretend she was Counselor Troy when she was much younger. But. <laughs> She's reading your mind. That's that's <laughs> scary. <laughs> yeah, and, and my son, my son is almost seven, and uh, uh, we just, you know, recently Golden Books came out with a bunch of Star Trek uh, themed books. Uh, I've even got some of the old, old uh, hardcover um, children's books that came out. It might have been maybe most most Random House or something. I don't remember, but they, I mean they're. They, they haven't stood up well against the test of time, but uh, he's entertained by those. In fact, we just recently watched uh, Trouble with Tribbles. That was his first Star Trek episode, not counting Prodigy. And he was entertained. Now, of course, you know, violence. There was some violence in that because they had that bar fight. And his first question was, Dad, why are they fighting? And it's like, well, it's because this Klingon uh, insulted the, or called the Enterprise trash, and Scotty didn't like that. And so, uh, you know, Scotty, you know, reacted violently. And I said, you know, you know, is that the best way to solve a problem? And he was like, no, that's not the best way to solve a problem. They should have been talking about it. And I'm like, yes, they should have been talking about it. But in the 60s, that's not what they were doing. Uh, but so, you know, I, 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 had, I had that dad moment, right? But no, I, so he's six and uh, he's going to be the perfect test specimen for me as we continue to, to, to bring more stuff out for the game. Um, you know, he's, he, I'm going to get him into role playing here pretty soon because like he's got the storytelling gene and I need to tap into that somehow and, and keep him engaged. 
Nice. And notice that the picture I put up behind me is Prodigy because I thought that would be appropriate to the Very subject here. Yeah. Is Prodigy's done a great job um, introducing Star Trek as a genre to children. And when I think about it, there, you know, there were some chase scenes, some robots. Robots were the main villain. Of course, much easier to beat up a robot than a real being, you know. Yes. So they they structured it to be a very safe show. Um, yeah. And to me, it was exciting. And I know we talk and dream about getting a license for Prodigy one day because of where that could go if mm -hmm. Mo Divius had a license in creating an RPG for children, right? Oh, yeah. That would be cool, yeah. yeah. Good. So so let's, let's jump into it. Um, I know that a lot of our fans, even on Continuing Missions, some people have posted stories about them playing with their children, which I thought was really cool. Um, some have even made visual guides for their children. Um, but, you know, if we're playing with adults, but we want to tone down the violence, let's just go around and talk about what kind of stories that Star Trek could lend its, itself to. Um, we, we're familiar with the books. Um, what are some of your favorite stories that don't showcase violence? Jacob, do you want to start? Uh, I like Disaster, I think. That's uh, from Next Gen. Um, you know, you've got you've got a lot of action. You've got a lot of like suspense. No one's killing anyone in it. Um, and I, I was very briefly a firefighter, so I've got a soft spot for like uh, search and rescue type things, which we don't see a heck of a lot in canon Star Trek. But uh, you know, that's something I'd love to incorporate. Mm -hmm. I, I can think of a lot of episodes just riffing off of that. I think about you know, episodes where Geordi LaForge had to go down to the terraforming planet because the, the terraforming wasn't going so well because they had accidentally made first contact with this crystalline species, mm. right? If you remember Literally that- bags episode. and mostly water. Yeah, wasn't that great? And to, to that point, that, that's a really good look into disasters, rescue, or, where there's interaction. Neither, neither party had violent intentions but it was just a conflict of existence, right? So mm -hmm. that's a good idea. What about you, Jim, when you think about? Yeah, I mean, as a, as a writer and as a Star Trek fan, I like character is the most important thing to me. And, and like seeing characters interact with each other, either positively or if they're like butting heads and going back and forth at each other. That's what, like that drama, that interpersonal drama fascinates me. And uh, I, think, um, I think of episodes like Duet, where you've got Kira and the guy pretending to be Maritza, uh, just, I mean, really, they're just two characters in a room, deep, deep, intense drama. There's not really any violence there, right? Like, like they're not bloody fighting each other, but they're, they're fighting with words and, and, and emotions. And um, so I think of that, I think of Duet, I think of The Visitor, just this uh, incredibly emotional episode about a, a father and a son and the trip, the, 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 the lengths that the, kid, the son is willing to take to bring his dad back is, is just really powerful. I think of like um, uh, Picard, The Inner Light, just this, mm -hmm. this whole exploration of his life in 45 minutes that mm -hmm. is lost, but he still remembers it all. Uh, so those kind of really introspective um, character episodes um, I really like. Like even um, uh, the one with pressure, Remember Me, where she's oh, yeah. trapped alone in yeah. the bubble, right? And she's got to get out. It's like, there's no violence there, but it's a great story. Uh, yeah. So I love or that. How about 010101? Did I get it right? I, I'm, I'm not sure. 011? <laughs> The one one zero zero one zero zero one the binar episode. So with the that's, that's, wow, I'm impressed. Yeah. Right. So we I have, think I got it wrong, but I, I'm not gonna look for it. <laughs> right. But but those are just some samples we're just throwing out, you know, to everybody. I, I even if we go to newer um, you know, shows like Strange New Worlds, where you have to Spock meeting to Pring, there's so many episodes where people are meeting their past like think about all the Loxana Troy episodes that don't yeah. have violence you're yeah. dealing with culture clashes feelings and those are some of my favorite episodes so it's yeah. doable it's totally doable right totally doable yeah. Yeah. yeah so when so um a lot of times too you know we have a lot of mission briefs and a lot of modules out um and I know one thing I do is I do filter it ahead of time to say, okay, my group's not all into the blood and gore and violence. We're really into the characterization. And so um, what about restructuring those modules? What, what, I know we've said it before, Jim and Jacob, you can add in too, but can people do that? Are they, I mean, can we, can we just take piecemeal from modules? Is that cool? Of course. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean and, I, and I've been a long, well, I mean, I, I don't think Nathan specifically spelled it out in the core book that this is a toolkit, but like the more the more I've gotten to get my hands into it and, and really kind of shape the direction of the game, 
this really truly is a toolkit, right? And like literally everything in every single book that we've made, the core book, all the supplements, all the adventures, all the mission briefs, these are tools for a game master and a group of players to use as they see fit. You should absolutely feel free to pull pieces from different ones and combine them and match them in a different ways. I, I know, um, Michael, we, I joked about this on one of the episodes, I don't remember, but like I was talking about how my son has this picture book that has all these different classical pieces of art, but they're cut into three pieces. So you can flip the pages and mm. make completely new pieces of art. It's just like, you know, you know the, the eyes and the nose and the mouth of three completely different paintings, but it looks cool and weird. And I was like, I wish somebody could make a computer program that takes all of our mission briefs, you know, the, the three major beats and the subplots and the, and the minor beats. If there was a way to like put all that content, cause it's all free anyway, put all that content into this blender and like have it strip out here's a here's a random major beat number one major beat number two major beat number three and and the the minor beats from like pull from all the hundred different mission briefs we have and, and mix it up into a, you know a million different combinations and you got that much more story i mean that would just be so cool but since we don't have that technology yet you know players and game masters should feel free to take any of our content and do whatever the hell you want with it because it's all there <laughs> to use for grist for your mill uh, jacob you were gonna say something oh i agree right I've been teaching myself spreadsheets and I think something like that might actually be doable. Probably. Yeah. I, I'll get back to you about that. Okay. <laughs> so, so, that would be so, a great for you, so for you, Jacob, you know, you're talking about the transformation you're making as a writer. Where do you see, um, you know, for, for Star Trek adventures related stuff, are you, are you currently running a group or playing in a group or if you're not, what do you, what do you <laughs> see your next games being set up, being set up like? I find it hard to write and game at the same time. Um, I just, I, it's circumstances. The last time I was able to play an in-person game of Star Trek Adventures was early, late 2019, you know, just because pandemic. Um, but that was, that was a lot of fun. But, you know, and I've just been reading and stuff and I get online gaming every once in a while, but I don't have any of that right now. So I'm, I'm focused more on the generating content side. Okay, good. And then where do you find your inspiration? Then if you're not, you know, it's easy. It, I always say movies, it's easy for them to fall back. I see. Do you hear my dog now? My dog oh, yeah. is <laughs> outside. Um, where do you find your inspiration for stories? Then this is good for game masters who are maybe making their own stories and want to, um, or want to tone down the violence? How do you, what's your process for that? Uh, well, you know, I've, I think about, there, there is a Japanese, and I forget the word for it, but the Japanese have a concept of stories without conflict, which I'm not sure how well, like, because there's every, every type of fiction pretty much has a conflict, whether it's something in yourself that you're fighting against or just a circumstance. But uh, I've been, I've been wondering about how you would put that in a game because it seems to me like instead of you didn't have any conflict it would have to just be about change or growth um but uh, stories where people are grappling with you know their own personal things and uh interpersonal relationships uh i've been finding some of the best storytelling that you can find is in game or shows like kim's convenience uh love that show <laughs> it well you know it's so good at the world building uh, you've you've got conflicts between uh, every different character, but they've got it in such a way that you can see each person's point of view, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it, no one acts against each other stupidly. They've all got decent motivations. They've got really good recurring characters. It feels like you know like the neighborhood where I used to live. So I've been yeah. coming at it from a lot of different genres. One of the shows which I've been super impressed with the writing because again it's not a show based on violence. There's a couple episodes where there's some political violence, but it's a for all mankind. For all mankind is about the space race in this in this um, fictional world where Russia were the first to land on the moon and how that affected the American economy and politics. And they're constantly just working to solve problems in space, even colonizing Mars. And it's just fascinating because I'm there on the edge of my seat and all that's happening the entire episode is them trying to save each other in these horrible situations. And I'm like, and it really reminds me kind of, a, of Enterprise early on too. They were first in, in space and stuff like that. So shows like that are riveting. And again, the writing is epic. And that of course makes a big difference too. Yeah. And letting the characters have those interpersonal relationships. Right, Jim? Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, I, I'm still, you know, I, I like, uh, there, there are a few TV shows that I'm watching right now. Like, uh, I, I haven't watched the finale yet, but uh, I've gotten caught up on uh, Better Call Saul, and uh, which is, you know, about two lawyers that do a lot of stuff. And it's not super violent. It's not, it's not as violent as uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, but there's some extreme moments of violence in it, for sure, that are like uh, um, shocking in a different way, because like you don't expect it quite so much in this show compared to Breaking Bad, which was like hyper violent uh, comparatively. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I have anything else to add, honestly. I've talked about it before, too. One of the best modules, I've, if, if you want to go through modules of Star Trek Adventures, and I'll talk about a free one that, again, zero violence and was just totally wrapped my group in was The Ghost Rider by Michael Duxbury. It came out in Modiphius issue two. And I, that's when I first really learned what Star Trek Adventures was capable of. Because it was this, this game where you all you were doing was a legal argument between a hologram and the daughter of someone who passed away and the hologram was that person's possession. And the interaction with the players was so uh, provocative with that. And I've heard that from some other gaming modules too, um, like Nest in the Dark, um, and call back yesterday. These are ones that there's no component of violence inherently built into it. And yet there's some of the more popular modules I hear about. So mm -hmm. Star Trek Adventures definitely has that as a potential. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. So so um, anything else you want to add, Jack, Jake, on this subject? I know this was an impromptu one, but we really wanted to encourage people to, you know. Uh, well, you know, I mean, there, there is an act of violence central to this film, but uh, have you ever seen the old Hitchcock film, Dial M for Murder? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm trying to kind of master, and you don't really write out dialogue in an adventure module, but, you know, if you're at a, at a table session, that movie has half an hour, the first half hour is two people sitting in a room talking to each other. And you don't realize that more time has gone by than in a normal sitcom because you've been on the edge of your seat seeing them work around each other. And so that's, you know, that's like another inspiration that I've been turning back to. It's like things like Kim's Convenience and that, that I watched a long time ago, but bringing back. Well, now you opened it up because to me, one of the most riveting movies of all time was zero violence. And you're in one room basically the whole time, 12 angry men. If you could write a Star Trek module of like 12 Angry Men about maybe a JAG hearing or some sort of debate, you would have a great module. I'm taking notes right now. Yeah, watch the original. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we haven't done a lot of episodes about like writerly advice because like I know it's, that's not really the point of the show. <laughs> but uh, I think um, over the over the years, one of the things I learned uh, from from other writers who you know informed and inspired me and then I try to pay it forward by inspiring other people is, um, you know, if you're a writer and you're writing fiction or you're writing screenplays or I mean, whatever you're writing, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, go read, go to your library, the local library, or go to a used bookstore and grab some stage plays, grab some stage plays off the, the little, I mean, they're, they're usually like real small paperbacks, like they're, they're five bucks. I mean, they're cheaper if you're going to use, but stage plays, you, you mentioned 12 Angry Men, which started off as a stage play. It is, it is so great to get character insights out of stage plays because there's set direction, certainly, but most of that is left up to the actors and the directors to figure out. And like every production is going to be different because everybody makes slightly different choices. But if you want just pure character, stage places, stage plays are the places to go read. And now, of course, you know, stage plays aren't really meant to be just read, right? You should go perform them. And I also encourage writers, go, go find a local improv group or go find a local community theater go audition for a show. You may not get in, but you'll have an opportunity to get up and read and get those words in your mouth and, and feel like that character and have that moment of like, okay, I'm actually talking to this person. And, or in, in the case of 12 Angry Men, and I, I was fortunate enough to be in a production of 12 Angry Men way back in the dark ages before uh, I moved on. But uh, so I got you know that theater experience and it was just, it's such a different experience to be on stage and, and being in that character and being in that moment. And it really informed my writing you know, moving forward it's like, oh, you know, it's not just me trying to make these words happen and this character, like, what is this character doing? But to being able to, to, to walk in their shoes and to, and, to, and to speak their words and stuff, really, really powerful as a writer. So, you know, aside from Star Trek completely, like if you want to up your game as a, as a writer, go grab some stage plays, uh, especially um, Neil Simon and uh, Steve Martin. Steve Martin is an incredibly good writer and oh, stage yeah. writer. He's got some great stuff out there. So, uh, so check it out. Uh, but, you know, definitely go to your library, go to your local... Um, 
theater groups, they probably have stacks of these. I mean, like every everybody's has stacks of scripts. <laughs> if you've done any theater, you got you got piles of them all over the place. Uh, so yeah, check check those out. Well, by the time this episode airs, too, the Utopia Planitia book will have been out, yeah. and I'm going to ask people. You could look into there, and there's several chapters in there about problems you can give your crew that don't involve person-to-person -person violence. Right. It, this could be ship breakdowns, anomalies, things that go wrong with ships. Um, and those are, again, are some of my favorite episodes, is just seeing people trying to survive. Bolana Torres, when she was on the Cardassian missile, trying to yeah. outwit the program. I mean, what a, what a brilliant episode that was. So um, I know uh, there's all kinds of encounter seeds spread throughout the different books that you could use that aren't violent, um, you know, aren't person to person violent or ship to ship violence. But I know Utopia Planitia, which is coming out, uh, will, which will be out by the time this airs, has a whole bunch of nonviolent seeds like that. Nice. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. I, I don't know if this was on the, uh, the agenda or the outline or whatever, but uh, we're talking about, you know, violence in games. Um, one of the one of the common questions I see on social media about this game is from people who are coming in from an, from other games who don't know anything about 2D20, don't know anything about Star Trek Adventures. They know Star Trek or they may be familiar with Star Trek and they want to play the game and they uh, they their 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 experience in gaming is limited to probably one or two uh you know incredibly popular games <laughs> like like i am not you know casting any versions but like clearly they're coming from dungeons and dragons or pathfinder um world and they're like oh mazes and math. what's that mazes and math mazes and math there you go <laughs> um and so some of the questions i normally uh, see on on different forums is um you know like how do you how do you level up like you how you do you kill it like how do you how do you gain experience points how do you, what what monsters do you kill in star trek and i always look at those questions and i'm like oh do i want to have this question this conversation again it always plays out the same way because they just there's that that it's not a barrier to entry but it's just that cognitive dissonance between going from one one game and one way of playing to to star trek adventures which is you know honestly very different than than any kind of leveling or or, or game where you're improving you're you're gathering you know, meta currency to improve your character. And I, I'm just curious, like, is it, do we want to talk about that just in terms of like, Star Trek doesn't rely on violence to improve your character. And that like, you know, I, I know Dungeons and Dragons doesn't really, but it certainly did back in the day. Like when I was playing basic in second edition and third edition, right? The only way to improve your character was to go kill stuff, get loot, and then then you leveled up and then you got more loot and you got better loot and you got magic weapons and all that stuff and you would you know continue up the chain but it was always always based on violence right i, I don't mean that in a negative sense and you know you know whatever you whatever you want to call it but like it, it, the whole point was to go bash down a dungeon door kill everything in it take all their stuff and then go enjoy enjoy yourself at the tavern and then do it all over again the next time right and again don't mean to disparage it but that's just yeah, no, I think, I think, um, and I'll, I'll be curious to see, you know, Jake, what you say about it, but um, for me, Star Trek Adventures, there is a sense of leveling up, but I'm going to call it more rounding out your character. So instead yeah. of leveling up, they have rounding out, showing through each story just how brilliant your character is. And that, and remember, with the options you have after every mission or milestone um, to, to change focuses, change values, change talents, this is all part of just because you exchange a focus doesn't mean you lost it forever. You can bring it back later for an applicable campaign. Um, you're showing, think about Jean Luc Picard, episode one, to how you feel about him by the time you see him in 1999, you know, or in, or in, uh, in uh, 2399. 20. It, it's no, 2499. 23. 2399. Yeah, right. You just made it to 2401 or 2399, right. So, so you, if you want to play this game, your goal is to round out your character so that they see how rich you are and what a value you are to Starfleet. Can you make your count, uh, your character more deep than maybe Menden the Benzite, who's totally egotistical in the two episodes we see him, you know? Or, or can you make him a rich, uh, make him, her, they a rich character like Worf by the time they get to Deep Space Nine? Oh my goodness, this character is just so rich. And when you look at them, you see all this back history and you don't want to mess with Worf, you no. know? 
that to me is the challenge. If you are an aspiring writer, if you play video games or com read comic books, yeah, we all dream of writing for them one day. This is your chance to craft that kind of character, which is deeper than any Dungeons and Dragons character I, I, I'm i aware of. I'm just not very aware of it. I'm, I'm sure it's out there. What about you, Jake? Thoughts on that? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, you know, I just completely lost the thought, the train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was talking too long. I was no, I was talking about rounding out. <laughs> yeah, rounding, pardon, thank you. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I was, you actually got, got me inspired for a possible writing project <laughs> or a pitch to Jim. So <laughs> I got distracted. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I, I like how it rounds things out uh, because, you know, it, it's a different di dynamic in the first place. You know, you're, you're on a, a ship in a post-scarcity ish economy you know you, there is no loot you're you've got everything you need so you get to focus on who your person is and i really like <clears throat> nda project being able to you know kind of help with that i think mm -hmm. nda project is uh <laughs> really gonna help people with that yeah we'll see <laughs> you said something real you said something um really good you know post-scarcity ish society and so I challenge people who are like, no, that's boring. It's like, wait a second. Could you actually exist in a world where there's no violence? Could you? Could you as a human being do this? Because if you're bored, if there's no violence, that could be one of the problems with society. We, I, I like exploring arts and science. And believe me, if you're into arts and sciences, you'll way better want to spend your time doing that than engaging in violence, hurting other people. I promise you. You know, so, so experimenting with Star Trek Adventures is actually pushing you as a person to grow too. Can you have fun without having violence? Nice. That's the challenge I, I, I give to people. And, boy, you raised an interesting, interesting point, Michael. I think there was some, some comment on social media. I don't remember who, I, I honestly, I, I can't remember, but uh, someone said, uh, well, you know, so, you know, you got, I think, I think the conversation started off talking about distances, right? They were like, how long does it take to get from point A to Earth? And I'm like, and the, the general scuttlebutt is, like, just make it up. Whatever you need for the purposes of your story. And it's like, okay, well, let's say it takes you know six weeks. How, what, what, how do I keep from getting bored on that six week trip? And I'm like, okay, this is one of the problems with the 21st century person trying to project into the 24th century. Is like these people are on a whole different, whole different level, right? They don't get bored. They're, they are, I mean, like they're in a post scarcity um, society. They have literally anything they want at the at the touch of a finger of a replicator, right? You don't have to go, you know, earn for 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 baubles or, or trinkets or whatever. You you they are focused on self improvement and self betterment. Like if they're bored, then there's something <laughs> something wrong, right? Because like they have the I mean I mean we are great we are fortunate to have the entirety of the human knowledge at our fingertips with our phones and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But like you take that to the next level and like you know now they've got the entirety of every Federation culture at the at the at their fingertips to to tap into memory alpha and stuff, right? Uh, so like you know, Starfleet characters by and large they don't get bored, right? Now I mean they may you know occasionally we'll see it on an episode or something and, and things will happen, but like like they're always always striving to learn something new and something different, and there's there's no violence in that. So I think a Star Trek character would I mean it, or most they don't have to be a Starfleet necessarily, but most Star Trek Star Trek characters have a lot of things going on always keep on like you know uh you know uh, quark is never bored he's always got another scheme or or uh, plan to, to to play on and uh um i think uh, it would just show a, a lack of imagination to to say that you're bored um and, and, i know and, i became more fascinated with yeah. science because of star trek i know star yeah, trek made, made made it so that man i want to be a geordie laforge you know i want to i want to understand science and it's all yeah. understandable and I think that's, to me, what I like in many of the modules I write in stories, I actually use real science as the base. And then I just, I, I take real science and the laws that apply to that, whether it's animal life, flora, physics, and I ramp it up with a little bit of sci-fi to yeah. make it interesting, but sound totally plausible, right? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a mental challenge. It's really fun too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, get, I get pitches from time to time from writers and like the, the crux of their story is you know, the crew and species of the week fight. And I'm like, okay, why? Why are they fighting? What, why, is, why is violence the solution? What, 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 other, what other options are there? You know, I, I encourage them to think about the fact that this is going to be played by thousands of groups all around the world. 
And I'm willing to bet that 75% of them, if not more, are probably going to be looking for the nonviolent solution because you can't predict what players are going to do. They're always going to find something else to do. Like, you know, the, the low hanging fruit really at this point, you know, dramatically and creatively is that they fight, right? There's always, there's other stuff going on. There's always stuff, other stuff going on. So I'm always pushing them to go to the next level, go to the next level. You know, it's an, it's an onion. Like every story is an onion, right? Peel back the layers, keep digging, um, look for the next thing. It's like, it's just easy to say, oh yeah, they fight. It's like, okay, so, it's, so what? It's one of the three low hanging fruits. I mean, I challenge yeah. people to write a, a riveting story without violence, sex, or swearing. I yeah. challenge, I challenge people to do that. Can you write a riveting story without any of that? That's when you know, <laughs> to my, in my opinion, that you've made it as a writer, is when you yeah. have people and you didn't need any of that in the story. Yeah, it's funny because <laughs> like all the legacy Star Trek series, that's, that's by and large, <laughs> right? Because on network television, they couldn't swear. Uh, holding hands was the equivalent of sex <laughs> and there was very minimal violence. So they had to get creative, right? You had to find other ways to do drama that didn't involve sex, didn't involve swearing at each other, and didn't involve shooting each other or, or punching. Each other. I mean, they did punching, but uh, but yeah, I mean that's that's network television right there, and that's that's the heart of Star Trek, uh, yeah. honestly. PG thirteen and uh, or PG PG thirteen, and then uh, go from there. Yeah. Well, continuing missions, do we invite anybody who who wants to submit stories they've written and about, played about that? We'll post it in continuing missions. We love hearing about it. I want to celebrate that too because that takes an extra level of. Uh, creativity i think in my in my opinion uh jake anything else you want to round out you know you brought up the subject it's great i think needed to be talked about absolutely um, and and definitely i hope this starts a discussion on social media where we can help each other out for people who want to create these kind of stories anything else you want to add you know um i'm just i'm just excited to see where things go from here now that like this kind of stuff's getting propagated and it's really cool you know i also i have to confess uh, i was one of jim's uh and then they fight <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> pitchers. <laughs> he, he'll, he could tell you a couple of them. So thanks, Jim. I really do appreciate that nudge. <laughs> well, I, would, I, would never, I would never call anybody out like that uh, in public. So, it, you know, I, I, I don't remember any of your pitches specifically going that route. But, um, um, yeah, I wouldn't call anybody out like that. So don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. He did the same thing to me, too. <laughs> I've been, believe me, I've, I've been rejected more than I've been accepted. But it's okay. <laughs> Um, I, I do want to add, no, you know, just uh, it probably doesn't need to be said, but I just want to make sure that especially if there's newer game masters and newer players listening in, like, you know, check in with your players, you know, have a session zero and, 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 and establish these baselines. Like maybe your group wants to have more violence in their game and that's fine. Right. Just but get everybody on the same page. Right. If most of your group is coming into the game thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, episode after episode of the inner light where you're looking for the, the introspective, um, you know, character heavy drama or storytelling and stuff and you're doing episode after episode after episode of you know best of both worlds where you've got you know you know blasters and borg and all this stuff i mean you, know, you may want to check in and just make sure you're all on the same level of uh of tolerance for violence and uh and go from there so and then even then you know after session geo once you're into your game you know keep keep that conversation going so it never hurts to reinforce um you know keeping in touch with your players and just making sure everybody's on the same page uh, as far as violence and, and types of violence. Like there's all kinds of types of violence. So um, mm. I don't think we're saying that you shouldn't do it, but just like, you know, be, be um, intentional about it and, and keep, and, you know, keep the, keep the finger on the pulse of your collective uh, players just to make sure you're not surprising anybody. Exactly. Awesome stuff. Okay. So we always love to do our shout outs and thank yous and all that kind of stuff. Jacob, why don't we let you lead it? Um, any shout outs or thank yous you want to pass out today? uh shout out uh hey dad <laughs> just my dad because he's who got me into tra star trek and he's the reason probably why my first memory and i'm not kidding is is watching journey to babel wow. nice that's, that's so a good cool one. you know what now i can't let you one up me so i'm gonna have to say my dad too <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs> he got me into it too but actually i love shouting out the game shops um and so today we're shouting out uh Games Plus in Mount Prospect, Illinois. Don Kramer, thank you for submitting that. We're so appreciative of the brick and mortars um, who keep the game alive and stock the books and um, encourage literacy and all the good stuff that, that you do. So thank you. Jim, you want to take us out with your shout out? Sure thing. Uh, as uh, I, I always say, I don't say it often enough, so I'm going to try to say it more often than I can. Uh, thank you to the fans for supporting the game and especially for supporting each other. I think I am 
extraordinarily grateful as a line as the project manager of this line that uh, uh, the, the fans make it easy for me, honestly, because because the fans support each other and they help each other along and they help teach each other the rules. And uh, they're so supportive on all the different social media and just in general, you know, you continuing mission creates all this great content for freezies. Um, and uh, it, it's just uh, really super encouraging. And, um, I, you know, I, I'm just grateful every day to see the fan base is just, you know, churning all this content on their own without any prodding from me or anybody from Medivius, honestly. And uh, um, I'm just grateful for the fans every day. And, uh, you know, I don't say it often enough again, like I said, but, uh, you know, we're doing this for you. Like if, if we didn't have the fan base that we have, we wouldn't be doing any more of these books um, or any, any more of these products because there wouldn't, there wouldn't be any reason to. Uh, but the, the fans have responded to it. They're grateful. I'm grateful. And uh, I am listening. So, uh, you know, rest assured there's cool stuff coming up in 2023 and beyond. So, uh, you know, get ready. Yeah, Jacob, look forward to seeing more of your stuff in NDA. All right. I D I C. NDA. Live long and prosper. Be safe. Be well. See you.